Tag TV and Tag Radio be seen and heard by both technology users and technology producers throughout the state of Georgia and around the world. Low cost, big benefits, powerhouse online branded video and audio has arrived. Tag TV, Tag Radio, there's a lot more to know. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com. New media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Blood, sweat, and, well, right now, big grinning smiles. You built that mid-market high-growth company from the seed of an idea. Okay, well, maybe more like the seat of your pants, but now what, especially in this economy? Or maybe you're a C-level captain of an Atlanta-based Fortune 500 mega giant facing an iceberg and two choices, let things happen to you or make things happen for you. Times are trying enough. What you don't need is advice coming from some firm that means what they say when they call what they do practice. If only there were someone right here in the Atlanta market someone with the brightest minds and the most innovative thinking. No, not an organization that cops an attitude, but lives by one, that an outside consultant should be trusted like an insider, more friend of the family than mere advisor. Greetings, everyone. It's Thursday, October 27, 2010, and this is a special tag premier member showcase edition of Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mandela. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. So your to-do list reads, tackle tough issues, integrate business and technology, drive growth, manage change, get stuff done. If only there were someone to turn to when the problem is too complex or the opportunity just too important. Enter Javian, one of the few firms to guarantee the success of every engagement and boldly drive a stake in the ground with a promise to do whatever it takes to achieve it. The Tech Talk Turns premier showcase as we gain the insights and experience of Nigel Zelser, partner and co-founder of Jabian, one of Atlanta's newest yet amazingly rapidly growing management and IT consulting firms. In a little more than four years, Nigel and his fellow partners and co-founders, Brian Burkowski and Chris Reinken, have distinguished themselves and the rapidly growing firm for the passion and performance in supporting organizations through their journey of transformation driving growth, and managing change. Prior to co-founding Javian, Nigel worked with Accenture in their communications and high-tech and electric utilities divisions, advising both a spectrum of U.S. and European companies on large-scale transformation initiatives. Nigel is considered a pioneer in large-scale outsourcing, on- and offshore development, e-commerce, and wireline wireless convergence. A member of TAG's board of directors and an instrumental leader in planning and shaping the association's, albeit the state of Georgia's, largest technology events. He's also a member of the Woodward President Circle, among a long list of philanthropic and professional association participation. Everyone should have someone to turn to when the problem is too complex or the opportunity just too important. Atlanta has Jabian. Today's Tech Talk is with its co founder and partner, Nigel Zelser. Nigel, welcome to Tech Talk. Well, thanks, Frank. Thanks for having me today. Well, let's talk about some real-world issues, and, and I think probably the best place to start is with business strategy. I think a lot of people know that it's not about just business definitions or relevant markets, a summary of relevant markets, for example, but it really takes a unique formula for success. And I guess the foundation of, of a business plan, as well as governing the day-to-day -day operations. Um, go right to the uh, chase and, and share with us some examples of how Jabian works with a client to achieve that kind of success, uh, you know, directly with business strategy planning and execution. Certainly. Um, give you a couple examples of where we have worked with some clients. Um, we had one client uh, who had gathered quite a bit of strong uh, good analysis of a marketplace, and they were looking to grow into new markets with new clients. And it had some really great top firms put together some great strategies and some great content. Problem is, they hadn't really implemented any of the strategies, and they requested Javian to come on in, look at the data that had been provided. And I think what we do so well with uh, those business organizations is to actually think about a strategy 
that the organization as a whole can implement and not just you know top tier consultants so we worked with this particular organization to look at that data look at their marketplace and that actually helped establish who their new clients would be they um, their clients are normally very large so attaining a new client is quite hard uh, and over the last 18 months or so they've been actually able to attain uh, quite a few clients due to the strategy that we help them implement. Um, another good example maybe of business strategy, uh, as we know in this hard economic times, uh, real estate had been quite complex. Mm -hmm. And so we had a client who had multiple billions of dollars of real estate on their books. And clearly a lot of people going into foreclosure and we helped them put a strategy together to actually create a new company. And this new company's whole purpose was to help remove the foreclosure properties off the books. Uh, they used a very innovative approach, uh, used a lot of uh, online uh, strategies. And in essence, we came in and, and from scratch helped them put together a marketing, sales, operations, uh, what their e-commerce and online community looked like. Hmm. But again, this was a strategy to help um, simple strategy to help them execute going forward. I think most of our listeners would uh, have thought more in terms of information technology management rather than business strategy. I'm really glad that you've covered that and gotten into some pretty diverse situations that I think most of our listeners might not have realized that that's the kind of thing that JBN does. Let's talk a little bit about information technology management, though. Um, obviously, the value creation that's created through technology uh, that's dependent on the alignment of what we just talked about, business strategies with technology. Uh, talk a little bit about that, maybe even get into some specific challenges that your clients have handled. Yeah, most certainly. And, and as you said, uh, technology management, we work with it a lot, uh, but we focus on business to start with. Um, so as we look at that alignment between uh, business and technology, you know, we will come to the table with a very strong methodology as it relates to doing business analysis and understanding truly what a company is trying to achieve with maybe their technology, but truly what they're trying to achieve from a strategic perspective. In many cases, uh, we see organizations, when they're looking at a particular project, maybe looking at what they're going to do or how they're going to do it, and only looking at those two dimensions. And when we look at solving a business and a technology problem, we're looking in a multi-dimension uh, approach in not only just what and how, but when and who and why and how good is something from a KPI and how much will, will something like that cost. I think alignment is a good term. I think yeah. it's really kind of a synergy is really what you're talking about, bringing equal uh, balance to both of those situations. Yeah, and what's important is understanding up front truly what the business organization mm -hmm. is trying to do. Understanding that pays off so much in the long run because once you start implementing a large project and you don't understand your scope up front, it becomes extremely expensive in the long run. Well, you know, I've, I think we're going to cover it a little bit later in some of our conversation, but I think bottom line, most people, especially today in the economy, if it doesn't make me money or save me money, uh, what do I need you for, you know, kind of a exactly. thing. Exactly. Um, let's talk about uh, IT innovation, though, and and, uh, and stay focused on that for a little bit longer. And I would say that that's kind of difficult to attain. Uh, how does managing the IT, I guess, shop in a business really help? Yeah, you know, managing IT as a business uh, probably sounds a little cliche, but many uh, high-growth companies um, are not necessarily treating their IT department as a business. They're mm. growing so fast, um, and, and they may be sometimes just missing some of the simple things, such as prioritizations of projects or estimating correctly or aligning the project to an overall corporate strategy. It's kind of running it as a business, truly understanding who your stakeholders are, aligning yourself to those stakeholders, being transparent with those stakeholders, and then holding people accountable. Once you start to run your IT shop or IT factory with these kind of best practices, treating it as a real business, a profit and loss business, then the, uh, the state of chaos goes away. People are starting to become more efficient. And actually, the members of the IT organization really start to get to innovate because they've got well-oiled, well-tuned processes taking place, and, and their customers are really starting to appreciate it. Yeah, that's really, you know, that's one of those aha kind of things. You know, you'd say to yourself, of course, but really I think most business people, as you say, are so distracted by the noise of just running a business 
that they probably, and you tell me now, this is your area of expertise, but they look at that kind of uh, expenditure as just that. It's not an investment. It's an expense, and don't manage it with an ROI. And what you're saying is basically looking at, at, at that as a, a almost a separate business within a business. Most certainly. I mean, if, if they don't treat it like an ROI and they're just treated as a cost, they're not treated as a trusted partner. Mm. And, and when they're not treated as a trusted partner, they don't get that opportunity to innovate. They don't get the opportunity to bring things to the table. Uh, they're, just, they're just a cost center. And then interfacing all of that uh, with the infrastructure that starts out with that business strategy. That's obviously the critical aspect of giving you the roadmap that leads to some of the decisions that obviously I think some of our listeners are saying that, you know, what do I do? It's so hard to make a choice. Um, old cliche, I think, is uh, you, you, there are no decisions when you know the facts. You know. Yep. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the other crazy side of technology now and these lightweight technologies that have popped up from out of nowhere, virtualization and cloud computing and social media. That's on everybody's mind. Um, these and other technologies, they have a profound impact on IT services, obviously the economics and resources, even the strategy. Uh, do you guys consider these technologies an opportunity, or do you find it a, a, a an opportunity for a stronger IT business voice? Well, we definitely see them as an opportunity. It's really exciting times. You know, uh, if we look at social media, for example, we're seeing companies harness the impact of what its customers are saying and doing and are using the information to communicate back into the organization to determine impacts to corporate strategies. Mm. You know, um, we're starting to see companies who were B to C start to say, well, maybe we're C to B, and, and we've got to start treating ourselves to allow ourselves to do whatever our customer wants. You know, good examples of this is probably uh, in the communications industry. Uh, we're seeing the communications industry provide to their customers whatever content they want, whenever they want that content, on whatever device, be it, you know, iPods, iPads, TVs, and whenever they want it with the DVRs and so forth. And we're really seeing that industry as a whole, I think, moving more to that C to B mentality of I will predict what my customer wants mm. versus looking back in the rearview mirror and then making decisions. We were talking with some academics just recently about the, the, the convergence happening everywhere, and obviously it's happening in, in the academic arena, and they were talking about it isn't the teacher dictating how the student wants student should learn. It's the student telling the teacher how they want to learn. So I guess in an analogy, it's kind of the same thing. You're saying the consumer gives you so much more of an input about how they want the product, what they want to buy, what they're willing to pay for it, all those kind of things. Got so many things I want to cover. Let's jump into customer relationship management. Uh, I, I think you would agree that the implementation in order to be effective has got to deal with people, processes, and the technology. And it goes back to what I was saying before. If it doesn't save me money or make me money, what do I need you for? Talk a little bit about JV and successes with your clients and uh, the experience in this mission-critical area. Yeah, you, you, you hit it on, on, right on with uh, mission-critical. I've got to assume that CRM is probably the most important tool to have in your arsenal. Um, we we work a lot of, with many companies in CRM and CRM implementations. Again, the technology side of the house can be extremely complex, but the way we approach it is first to sit down with the stakeholders, normally people in marketing, sales, operations, and truly make sure that all of those groups are on the same page as it relates to how they've defined a customer. And many times we find that marketing sees customer different than sales and most certainly sees it different than operations see a customer. And before we actually engage on doing the technical implementation of a CRM, we make sure that those stakeholders truly understand who is their customer and how should their customer be, be treated. Once we have those guidelines and those principles, then we can look at the technology. Different CRM technologies fit different needs. Uh, and that's kind of our approach. You know, maybe one example of our client, um, a little bit technical for the technical group on, on uh, the CRM has, this is a company that's gone from a departmental mid-market to the moving into the enterprise. And we have helped um, move their CRM system to the center of the enterprise using a service-oriented architecture to allow all of their other applications to now access one source, one truth of the customer all the way through the CRM. And, and this has been really dramatic in this organization. 
Now let's talk a little bit about teamwork, um, a stronger teamwork atmosphere. Uh, I think obviously that is part of operational excellence, and I think that's really what you're talking about. Uh, I've learned, I know our listeners have too, so much more about the comprehensiveness of the relationship that JBN has with its clients. Touch a little bit on operational excellence and maybe talk about uh, JBN's best practices surrounding the subject. Well, you know, operational excellence is really about helping organizations perform key business functions um, more efficiently. Um, so we work with our clients through continuous improvement efforts to streamline processes, improve management practices, and enhance the understanding of business needs across the enterprise. You know, we have offerings in the place of demand management where we're helping organizations uh, equate supply to demand. Uh, we have process engineering and optimization methodologies that we'll bring into an organization that's trying to streamline. And as we discussed a little bit earlier on, we have very strong business analysis skills, so mm -hmm. truly understanding that scope of what an organization is trying to do. I'm not clear that we have any – my, my mind's thinking in terms of uh, – um, you and I are good friends. I've known JBN since its origination back in 2006, and – and uh, I think everybody's a buzz about the tremendous growth you've enjoyed. I think a lot of what is uh, uh, represented by that growth is the knowledge and the comprehensive of the services that you've described that you bring to your clients. But uh, share with us, and I know it's kind of an embarrassing kind of question to come at you with, but in, in light of the economic situation over the past few years, w w how are you enjoying such amazing success? What, what's, what do you attribute to well, as you know, we're an Atlanta-based management and IT consulting firm, and as you said before, uh, why have us unless we can help uh, increase revenues and decrease operational costs, and, and that's really our focus. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we're local and have some very senior resources uh, really helps out. So in these not such great economic times, the fact that we can come to our clients, and yes, there's a bill, but the bill does not include any expense money. We're all local. We all live in Atlanta. That really helps out. Mm. We're focused on delivery. Um, you know, we try to become the trusted advisor of every client we're at. Uh, and, and we treat every project as if it's our last project, and we try to knock it out of the ballpark every single time. We're also pretty lean and nimble. So in these poor economic times, we can react very quickly to the marketplace. We have very innovative approaches to our recruiting. And as I said before, uh, we hire the best of the best. Most of the folks are out of a big four, big five. Some are from industry. These are folks who um, have wanted to get off the road and, and help serve into the Atlanta community. And then probably finally, and most importantly, uh, we have a very innovative and entrepreneurial group. Uh, and we approach innovation at all times as we go into our client sites. And in fact, we have things called innovation councils where every two weeks on a particular client or account group at our, on our own dime, we meet as a group and we try to think of innovative ways that can help our client. And then we pass on those innovations to our client at no cost and in many cases in a way that we can't service them, but they're good innovative ideas that they can run with. Tell well, us a little bit about how we've been successful. Well, it, it's amazing, and, and I think for our listeners to really appreciate just in a, in, in, a, in a matter of just a few years, you've become such a marquee in terms of performance, and I think that's the bottom line, results and the referrals that come from results and success with the clients that you've been working with. But there's another point, too, and I, I really want others to, to hear this because I know that anyone that's involved with the Technology Association of Georgia and probably several other technology organizations and other nonprofit organizations around the city and the state of Georgia know Jabian for its philanthropic work. For a, for a company your size, once again, it's kind of amazing just how active you are, both professionally and, and, uh, and charitably working with nonprofits. Uh, again, at the point of making you a little bit embarrassed, tell us a little bit about uh, how your employees and even Jabian Cares, which I know is a, the theme or mission that you guys have internally, uh, is at the center of all this philanthropic activity. Well, no embarrassment here. I'm actually very proud, and I'm very proud of JBN Cares. Uh, this is our charitable organization whose mission is to support innovative approaches to improve the quality of life in our local community through volunteerism, leadership, and financial support. And we created JBN Cares um, August 1st of 2009, and it was really driven from the fact that all of our employees who do truly appreciate Atlanta and want to be involved in Atlanta and are involved in Atlanta, uh, we, we use JBN Cares to center that. And so it's a employee-led uh, foundation. Employees can um, 
donate from their paychecks. Uh, JBN then management then matches all donations. Mm. And then we look at the Atlanta community, as you described, both philanthropic, um, predominantly which is where JBN cares from things like um, Trees Atlanta, Habitat for Humanity, Susan G. Komen. We have probably 80 different um, different charities that we're involved with. And as you also said, we're also involved very much in a business community. As you know, we're very proud supporters of TAG. It's an amazing organization. We hold also some of our own roundtables, both the uh, Marketing Executive Roundtable and the Atlanta Process Executive Roundtable and a Change Management Executive Roundtable, where we are helping high-level executives from Atlanta businesses come together, discuss their problems, discuss them in an open uh, but closed-door forum, uh, and uh, we believe in giving back to that business community. Well, the bottom line, professional leadership, I, uh, not just uh, at, at a good times when business is booming, but now at a time when it's such a critically important need, and you're providing that, and then at the same time, real social consciousness, a, a true uh, integrity that uh, really shines out as a standard. Um, thank you, N Nigel, for joining us today, but more importantly, thank you for what you guys are doing at JVN and all the great work you've been doing over the last couple of years, and thank you for joining us today on Tech Talk. Well, thank you, Frank. Thanks for having me.